What's up everyone? Welcome to my first YouTube video in which I'll show you how to turn this into this. Okay, let's see what's inside the box and whoa, that's a lot of parts. As some of you might know, this kit has an interior which takes up most of the spruce. But I'm gonna build this model closed because I'm lazy and I'm all about that weathering. So let's get the parts I will need for this build. Whoa, 8 parts for 29 euros, what a great deal! I started with some ordinary cleanup of the parts and while doing so I noticed these 4 sink marks on each side. So let's quickly fill them with some Tamiya putty. Try to be careful around fine details like this fuel cap. Ok, I'll need a few more parts to build the main frame of the tank. I glued it together with Mr. Cement S glue. It dries really fast and leaves no residue on the surface, so win-win. When the putty is dry we can sand it down. I'm using a carpenter sanding sponge. Nice, let's move on. I also decided to make the edges of this fuel tank cover a bit sharper. A new hobby blade is useful for this task. Simply scrape away the plastic around it and BOOM! Now it's time to create some armor texture. For this I'll use Tamiya putty thinned down with Mr. Cement. Simply dab the brush against the model and make sure the putty melts the plastic just a little bit. It's best to use a smaller brush when applying the texture around fine details. Here I noticed an exhaust pipe. Let's make a new one. I'm using these old dividers to punch a hole in the center of the exhaust. This will serve as a guide for the drill. And then I just drilled the hole removed the remains and reapplied the armor texture. I will use a super fine sanding sponge to polish the texture. It's best to do this before you glue any details to the model so you won't break them while sanding. Ok, time to cut some brass tube. For this I'm using a bootleg Dremel tool and 0.9mm tubing from Albion Alloys. Put the freshly made exhaust into the uh -huh, hole and decide how much it will protrude. This random super glue will fix it in place. I'm using this old brush handle with a thin wire as a super glue applicator. I've been using it for years and it's a very handy tool. And BOOM! Our custom exhaust is done. Before I went any further I glued all the inner ball mount fixtures in place. The excess molten plastic had to be scraped off so the ball mounts would fit snugly. Now I could glue both halves of the hull to the main frame. Let's now make the main guns. It's important to carefully scrape the seam lines without altering the gun's shape. That means you cannot put any pressure on the blade. So be careful with that. It's also important to sand it with a sponge, which won't alter the shape either. And some careful polishing will finish the cleanup. Now I could glue the guns to their ball mounts. Unfortunately, this gap has to be filled, as this part represents a sleeve into which the gun slides during recoil. I often use this oxide red primer to check for any imperfections in the surface. 
Luckily the gun looks pretty good, so I just quickly polished it one more time before moving on to the next step. Making the weld seams. For this I will need some Tamiya two-part putty, tap water, a brush, two styrene sheets and a few custom tools. First we need to mix the two putty components together. Just press, stretch and roll them until the blob becomes colored like this. Now I need to use tap water to prevent the putty from sticking to the styrene sheets while I'm rolling it. This takes a while and needs a bit of practice, but it's important to keep the weld bead thickness in scale. Now I can cut the bead into smaller parts and place them onto the model. Here I'm pressing the bead into the joint between the ball mount and the gun sleeve. Make sure the bead has no water on it, otherwise it won't stick to the surface. I made this highly sophisticated tool for adding the weld texture. Hmm, this doesn't look bad at all. This step might seem just as entertaining as watching paint dry, but I think it's one of the most effective ways to make any model look like it's made from metal. Even if you're building completely out of the box, adding some armor textures and a few weld beads, that is all you need to make the model look more realistic. I also fixed a steel nut to the lower part of the frame to make the model more stable. Let's now assemble the track. It's best to glue the track segments from the inside, so you won't spill any molten plastic on the model. Then just add another link and put glue on the joint. And on the inside as well. The track is supposed to be made from a single piece of rubber, just like a tire. Therefore, we must fill every gap. This can take several layers of putty. Be careful on the side walls, so you won't dab any putty on the weld seam underneath. And also be careful while sanding it. Now I want to sand the tread pattern to make it look worn. I will use this brutal sanding stick for that. Let's inhale some dust. Mm, yeah, this looks much better. And now for the rest. This might take a while. Anyway, I also use the sanding sponge to smoothen out the surface. Now I took this low cost chisel with a broken tip and used it to tear out chunks of the track. It's important to um, stab the surface. Don't just slice the plastic away, although easier this won't look so good. I think you get the point. Now I brushed the liquid cement over the damaged parts to clean them up and also to soften their edges. And once again sanded the treads. I also stippled some very diluted putty over the entire track to give it an overall rough texture, but not as much as on the hull. This will make the track look like it was driven over hard and uneven ground. And I sanded it. Again. But now for the final time. Hmm, could be better, but it will have to do. Let's now get to some of the less pleasant parts of the build. This mudguard cracked when I tried to glue the wheel into it, so I had to fill the cracks and sand them smooth. You should see my shocked face when this happened. No glue was used on the other wheel to avoid any more damage. The headlight should be a single part along with the support beam. There's also a small groove on the hull where it should be attached. 
but I didn't find it on the headlight or anywhere else in the kit. I mean, I made one from scratch and even added a cable and a weld seam, but it was... unexpected. The lens is very nice though, and I will add it when the model is painted. And while I was at it, I added some weld seams around the suspension hinges. Now I just had to add the guns and complete the model. So here it is. It's definitely a nice model, but I'm not sure if this thing would work if it were ever made in real life. It's a ball, so it should be pretty easy to paint and weather, right? Nope. It's actually gonna be quite tricky and you'll see why in the upcoming episodes. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you mates in the next one.